This is a parabola. It's the shape that a quadratic equation forms in the xy plane. Depending on the format of the quadratic equation, we can learn different things about the parabola formed. This lesson covers the main parabola landmarks, the three equations that tell us those landmarks, and the relevant vocabulary. We're going to cover a lot, and you must memorize all of it for the SAT. First, let's identify the main parabola landmarks. Every parabola has a y-intercept, where the curve crosses the y-axis, and a vertex, where the parabola turns. Some parabolas have one or two x-intercepts, where the parabola crosses the x-axis. We can also say that every parabola has a direction, depending on whether it opens upward or opens downward. Notice that parabolas are much more complicated than lines, which is why there will be more equations to memorize. It's also worth noting that parabolas do not have a slope. For SAT purposes, only lines have slopes. The most important quadratic equation is standard form, which will look like y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. The a represents the direction of the parabola. If a is positive, the parabola opens upward. If a is negative, the parabola opens downward. In this case, there is no number in front of the x squared term, which means that a is equal to positive 1. This is very common, and it would tell us that this parabola opens upward. The b is negative 2, but that doesn't tell us anything specific about the shape of the parabola. On the other hand, the c immediately tells us the y-intercept. We can see that the negative 8 in the equation matches the negative 8 y-intercept on the graph. You should think of standard form as the main version of a quadratic equation. We use the a, b, and c from standard form in lots of other formulas related to quadratics, like the axis of symmetry, discriminant, and quadratic formula. You are also probably familiar with factored form, which tells us the x-intercepts of the parabola. Each parenthesis term is a mini-equation that we can set equal to zero and solve for x. In most cases, the x-intercept will simply be the opposite sign of the number in the parentheses. If there's a number outside the parentheses, it's the same a that we saw in standard form, so it will tell us the direction of the parabola. This quadratic has no visible a because we already saw that a is equal to 1. Finally, you need to memorize vertex form, which tells us the vertex. The SAT absolutely loves this type of equation, so it is almost guaranteed that you will see at least one vertex question on your test. Get comfortable with the overall formula, where y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. The h and k represent the x and y coordinates of the vertex. Notice that the x-coordinate is the opposite sign of the number in the parentheses. On the other hand, the y-coordinate is the same sign as the number at the end. This is a confusing aspect of vertex form that the SAT will try to trick you with. The a at the beginning of the parentheses is the same a that we've seen in the other versions of the equation, so it tells us the direction of the parabola. With all three versions, we have a very good idea of what this parabola will look like, but even with just one version of the quadratic equation, we would still be able to make a quick sketch. As always, no matter what type of equation we have, the x and y represent all of the points on the graph of the equation, so we can plug in any points for x and y, and we should produce a valid result. Before we move on, I want to stress that the SAT often talks about these quadratic landmarks using other vocabulary. For example, if we have a story along with our equation, the y-intercept might be described as the starting point or initial value. The x-intercepts are sometimes called roots, zeros, or solutions, and the parentheses terms themselves are called factors. In this case, 4 is an x-intercept, a root, a zero, and a solution of the equation, and x minus 4 is a factor of the equation. The vertex is sometimes called the turning point, and depending on the direction of the parabola, it is either the maximum or minimum. In this case, the vertex is a minimum, because the parabola opens upwards. You might also hear that the x-coordinate of the vertex represents the axis of symmetry, which is the vertical line that cuts a parabola in equal halves. I'll talk more about that in a separate lesson on vertex. Since this is such an important topic, let's look at one more example. This time, I'll give you only standard form, and we'll make a rough sketch of the parabola using the equations. Right away, we would know that the parabola opens downward, because the number in front of the x squared is negative 2. We also know that the y-intercept is negative 10. But this isn't enough information to get a clear idea of what the parabola looks like. It could have two x-intercepts and be pretty skinny, or it could have no x-intercepts and be very wide. Or the vertex could appear on the other side of the y-axis. This is why we usually need more than one form of a quadratic equation to understand what the parabola looks like. To find out, we could use algebra to factor the equation into factored form. After dividing out the negative 2, we could factor the remaining quadratic, which would give us x-intercepts of negative 5 and negative 1. Plotting those points gives us a better idea of the overall shape. At this point, there are a few ways that we could find the vertex, which I'll cover in a separate lesson. The algebraic way to get the vertex form is a process called complete the square, but it's hard to remember and tedious to perform. Luckily, if the parabola has x-intercepts, then we know that the vertex is exactly halfway between those two x-intercepts. As you can see, the x-coordinate of negative 3 is halfway between negative 5 and negative 1. 
From there, you could plug the x into the standard form to find that the y value is 8. It is probably easier to find the vertex points first and then use those values for h and k to build the vertex equation. I know that this is a lot of information for one topic, but this is probably the single most important video that you can watch for the SAT math sections. Quickly understanding quadratic equations and parabolas will help you on numerous questions, especially the most difficult ones. Let's quickly review the highlights one last time. Make sure you memorize the three main forms of a quadratic equation. All three forms can tell us the direction of the parabola based on the a term. The standard form is used for many other formulas related to quadratics, but on its own we can quickly know the parabola's y-intercept. The factored form gives us the x-intercepts, and the vertex form gives us the vertex. Both the factored and vertex forms include negatives that are easy to lose or forget. And it's worth pointing out that for all three forms, the x and y represent all of the points on the parabola. Regardless of which form you're given, you can always plug a point into the equation to test it out or to solve for a missing coordinate. For example, you don't need to be in standard form to know the y-intercept, because you can plug 0 in for x in any of the forms and solve for it. Since quadratic equations are such a dense topic, I recommend bookmarking this lesson and rewatching it before every practice test and the morning of your actual SAT. I'm confident it will save you a few points. Thanks so much for watching.